Welcome back to the final stretch. President Trump's campaign is making its final push. The Wall Street Journal is making note that his camp can pick up key groups heading into Election Day. One group the journal's Jerry Sieb, uh, Seib rather, writes about, uh, I'm sorry, Jerry Selb notes, is that white people without college degrees. The Cook Political Report says, quote, whites without college degrees make up 60 percent of those who didn't vote in Michigan, 64 percent in Pennsylvania, and 64 percent in Wisconsin in 2016. Other groups they point out include Hispanics, black men, white evangelical women, and senior citizens. Joining us now to offer insights into the campaign's thinking is Trump presidential campaign senior advisor for strategy, Steve Cortez. Steve, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Good morning. Of course. Good morning. Look, we've we've seen a lot of outreach to the black community. We know that. And we've spoken with a number of uh, leadership voices within minority groups uh, who say that the president's comments and his work has resonated with them. What are the most important groups do you think that this president is trying to reach out to to try and get his policies to resonate? Look, Maria, you know, of course we want the votes of all Americans, but we do also reach out in an intentional and respectful way uh, to coalitions and interest groups. And I think Hispanics, now I might be biased here as an Hispanic myself, uh, but I think Hispanics are going to be the most significant group for this election and the, and the most transformational group, meaning that they're coming our way. Early polling shows a lot of success. The most recent Fox News poll on a national basis shows 42 uh, percent Hispanic support for President Trump. Now, I think we can do even better than that, but any number north of 40 percent makes the electoral map very problematic for Joe Biden because it likely means that we solidify key swing states like Arizona and Florida, that we win them again. And I also believe a lot of other states are in play that we didn't get last time, particularly Nevada and perhaps New Mexico. So Hispanics have been left behind largely as political orphans by a Democratic Party that lurches ever leftward. Hispanics are also benefiting from this recovery right now, this economic renaissance that flourishes in our country. I'll give you an example. Pickup truck sales, light uh, heavyweight truck sales just hit an all-time high in September. Pickup trucks mean work. Hispanics are heavily involved in the kinds of trades that use pickup trucks. So this country is getting back to work no matter what your color or your ethnicity. Uh, but Hispanics are a key part of it. And I believe that they are they are rallying to the president's message. Also, our opponent is really fumbling on this score. Uh, Joe Biden's idea of Hispanic outreach is going to Florida and playing Despacito on his cell phone. Uh, that is Hispandering. Uh, we have reached out to Hispanics with respect. And I think it's working. You know, it's interesting that you say this because Herschel Walker came on the program a couple of weeks ago and said, look, we're talking about the black vote uh, getting up to above 20 percent of the black community voting for Donald Trump. We also had Rick Grinnell on the program saying that the uh, gay and lesbian vote, LBTQ vote, is also uh, more and more supporting President Trump. But we all want the same things. So in terms of categorizing right. this, categorizing this it, it's really the same thing all across the board. We want safety and security for our family, and we want opportunities uh, in terms of our, our lives. And that's what I know you have been talking about. On the campaign trail, how's right. the president going to communicate this? The candidates are racing across the country in the seven days before the election. The president is going to Arizona and the Midwest. Joe Biden is visiting Georgia and Florida before heading to Iowa. Steve, let me ask you, some of these longstanding, uh, you know, red states, like a Texas, like a Florida, do you worry that they are turning purple in any way? Well, listen, I mean, do I worry? Look, we, we're always concerned, right? Because I just think that's the right way to operate. Let's act like we're behind in states, even if we believe that we're up. Let's make sure that we hustle and earn every last vote and leave it all on the field. This president is certainly doing that. Everyone in this campaign is. In terms of getting this message out, though, I think you're exactly right. That, you know, we have become, the Republican Party now, a party of workers. And a party of workers, we want jobs, not mobs. Last night, we saw some really unfortunate scenes happening in Philadelphia. Violence against cops, violence against stores. Uh, that is not the America that we want. It's unfortunately the America that Joe Biden would uh, facilitate because of his disrespect for police. Uh, every major police union in this country has endorsed our candidacy. And the president is going to keep barnstorming the country for this last week, uh, taking his message directly to the American people. The affirmative case is the economy, uh, that this economic renaissance can continue and accelerate if we rehire Donald Trump as our national CEO. But he'll also define who his opponent is, particularly as it relates to this China laptop from hell scandal that Joe Biden has still not sufficiently addressed.
Well, you're right. I mean, the corruption on the other side has been talked about, and the Biden camp has not said that these are, you know, uh, fraudulent emails. I mean, they are emails. They are his laptop. So no comment from the campaign right. there. Steve, we'll keep watching. Thank you so much. Steve Cortez with Seven Thank Days you. to Go Before Election Day. Thank you, sir.